What's up squeegee slingers and water fed pole wiggling wagglers welcome along to the Tradman Academy YouTube channel. Today we're discussing the nano trolley. This is made here in the UK. I've had it a little while now. What do I think of it? What's it been like to use? Has it been any good? Stay tuned. So yes indeed folks, today we're discussing the Nano Trolley. Now if you've got this trolley, I'd love to hear your experiences in the comments box below because we all have different experiences with different tools. So let me know how your experience has been with the Nano Trolley. In this video, we're gonna discuss what my experience has been over the last few months with using this trolley setup. So first things first, what are the features of the Nano Trolley? Well, it has a 100 PSI pump, which is tucked in the bottom of the trolley there, along with the battery. Now, I quite like that. It's pretty well protected. Even if you get water down the front of it or the sides, those things are pretty well tucked away down there, okay? You've also got the V16 controller. We're going to talk about that in just a second. And this is how it actually works. You've got your hose here, with you've got a little filter on the end. That simply goes into the barrel like so, I'll put that into the barrel now, just like that. And then obviously it sucks the water or chemicals, whatever it is you've got on your barrel through that yellow hose and then out to the end. Now, the standard fitting is a rectus fitting. Now I have changed it to a hose lock fitting because I primarily use them. I very often use the customer's water supply and things like that. So it's good to keep all your fittings fairly similar, um, but it doesn't really make any difference what fitting you use. You can use whatever you like but I have changed this to a quick release hose lock connection, just so you know. One of the things I do like about this trolley is the wheels, they are puncture proof, and it's pretty easy to pull it behind you if you're going along grass or through loose stones, unlike some of the thinner plastic tires you get on some of the sack trolleys and things like that. This one's pretty easy to pull through most types of terrain, so I do like that feature. Now, weight-wise, when you don't have a barrel on there, it's just over 12 kilograms, so it's fairly light. But obviously, once you chuck on a 25-liter uh, water container, it does add quite a bit of weight then. So if you're gonna be taking this in and out of a vehicle, I'd recommend taking the barrel off, put the trolley into your vehicle, and then put the barrel separately. It's just easier to work that way. Now to pull the trolley around, it's quite obviously you use this handle here, it is adjustable. You can turn this little dial and it goes up and down to kind of suit your needs. I wasn't overly impressed with this. There is only one little screw here to hold the handle in place. And I have found that sometimes this tends to slip. I would have liked to have seen a better method to clamp this handle in place as opposed to one screw that is just pushing against the handle to hold it in place. So hopefully if uh, the folks at Pure Freedom are watching this, they can take note of that to come up with maybe a better solution to have that handle locked in place, whether it's a little pinhole system or something like that, or a button where you could push it on either side and it locks both sides of the handle in place as opposed to just pinning on one side of the handle. So a little something to note there. The height wise, this sits at its lowest point is just under 700 millimeters. And at its highest point that you can lock it is just over a thousand millimeters, 1,114 millimeters to be precise, at its highest point. So just to give you an idea, there's a little bit of range there depending on your height and where you want to, to have it while you're pulling it along. I have it in its maximum setting, so I'm a little bit taller. Um, I would have liked to have seen the handle go up a little bit more it's still a little bit low for me, um, but it's definitely better than some trolley systems that I've used. Now the battery in the bottom is a 12 volt battery. It takes about four to five hours to charge and you do get the charging little unit with it as well. So normally what I do is actually, I just charge this once a week and that tends to last me the entire week and I use it pretty much every day um, to make sure I was giving this a good test. I've been using it daily. So I just plugged it in at the end of the week on Friday and then it was ready to go again by Monday. And like I say, it only takes four or five hours to charge. So you can take it out after that and then it's ready to go. Now the pump itself being a 100 PSI pump, it delivers just over 5.5 liters per minute. It's got a really quite a good decent flow. But the V16 controller, I have found to be an absolute pain in the bum. Just to be completely honest with you, 
I've had to calibrate it so many times. Um, and to be honest with you, it doesn't seem to matter what number it's on. It kind of just makes up its own mind what it's going to start piddling out the end of the brush. So sometimes I've got it set fairly low, under 50, and the water is absolutely peeing out. And then at the next job, and I've not touched it, the next job it just dribbles out. So there's maybe a bit of a fault with this unit. Maybe I've just got a dud one, I don't know. But yeah, the numbers, when you adjust it, don't tend to do very much. Um, and it does get airlocked fairly easily as well, just to make you aware of that. The last trolley system I had, if you ran out of water, you just chucked in some more, it gurgled for a few seconds, and then it just fired away. Whereas this, what you'll need to do is if you accidentally run out of water and you've run it for a few seconds, is to disconnect your, your brush, your pole hose, let the water come directly out of the trolley system, you know, press on, let it flow, get the air out of the system, it takes a few seconds, then connect up your pole and you should go back to the flow that you had before. But yeah, I have found the V16 controller to be a bit temperamental. Um, it decides what it wants to do, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's been a bit of a pain, um, to be quite frank. So I'm a little bit disappointed in that, that considering that this is over 700 pounds to buy this thing, uh, it was quite a bit of a headache to get it to, to work. Now that I've worked with it for a couple of months, I've got used to little things that you do and don't do with it. Um, and I have managed to obviously get through the work with it and using it for work, it, it, I have managed to do that. I have had to learn the little things that it doesn't like, you know, which is a bit annoying. You just want to get to work, get grafting, don't you? Whereas the last trolley setup I had, that's exactly what it did. Whereas this one, unfortunately, it's a bit temperamental. Now, if you've been following the channel for a little while, folks, you know I've got a little bit of an eye for detail. And for me, when I look at a product, when I first get it, I'm looking at the fine details. And then that gives me an idea of how good a quality product it is. So the first thing I noted when I got this product, um, and like I say, it's over 700 pounds to buy, is that even this little pipe, that is this white bit of piping that goes around your yellow hose, they've not even cut that straight. It literally looks like a dog has bitten off the end of it. Um, it's it's really poor workmanship, to be honest. It looks Maybe it was put together on a Friday afternoon, I don't know. But it's little things like that I'm looking at going, right, well, if it's not even been cut straight, this bit of pipe here, it's just all got jagged ends. It's not been filed down, it's not been cut straight then what else is wrong with it? If they haven't taken the time to even do that properly, which is, to be honest, my eight-year-old could do, um, what else has not been done right? So little things like that. I mean, as time goes on, I will keep you posted, things that I've found. But yeah, there's there's things that I haven't liked about it. There, there is things I do like about it. Um, but for the money, do I think it's worth over £700? No, I do not. Um, I think, to be honest with you, you know, even paying somewhere around four or five hundred pounds for this is, you know, would would be okay. You know, up to over seven hundred pounds for this, no, not a chance. Um, so yeah, that's my opinion anyway. It's maybe not uh, in agreement with what you think, but let me know in the comments box below what you maybe think. If you've got this, you've tried it, what you think of the quality. I can't fault the steel. So far, it's been pretty solid. Like I say, I'd like to see a better way of adjusting and locking the handle. But the actual steel itself so far has been okay. Some of the coating has come off from where you take the barrel on and off. Um, that coating has come off a little bit, but structurally, can't fault it. Nothing's fallen off yet. So <laughs> I'd absolutely hope so for that price. Um, but yeah, so far, you know, there's been ups, ups and downs, pros and cons to it. So that is my review of the Nano Trolley and the features of it. Bit of a mixed review there. Kind of like it, kind of don't. Yeah, I'll keep you posted. But yeah, hopefully that's helped you to some degree. Maybe it hasn't. Maybe you're sitting there going, thanks, Pete. That's not really helped me. I was a way to click buy, but now I'm not sure. So sorry about that. But yeah, to be honest with you, it's a lot of money for what it is. So you know, have a good think before you before you pull the trigger. All right, guys, take care, be good, and remember, keep on squeegee slinging and water-fed pole wiggling waggling. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Smash thumbs up and subscribe if you can, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, be good, and bye for now.